better than yours. I remember I actually mentioned it to you a few times, didn't I? Loads of times. I remember mentioning it to him a few times and just like, I don't know. But what happened was um, I remember sitting at home and um, I, sent, I, I sent you a text, right? I was like, I no, know you phoned me. Did I phone you? Yeah. Okay. You called me, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, listen, man, why don't you just get your pro license and let's and we can do this. We can be a, we can be a team. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what that's what happened. So I'm the one. I'm the, I'm the one that approached him. He didn't. He, he didn't approach me. Yeah. But most people who follow my YouTube channel, who follow mm. O'Hara on social media, would know that we've been doing our training together for years. Yeah. But it was more behind the scenes because I see you guys, guys why I've done it behind the scenes. I've been under the Sims for years. I was there for like three years. And but I knew in myself that listen, there's about seven, eight other fighters there. I can't get the quality time that I need and I can't learn certain techniques because he's got so many people to teach. You can't give me all the time. You can't look at my opponents and look at Ricky Burns' opponent, look at Joe Cordina's opponents, Martin Moore's opponents, all all at the same time. You can't give that energy to everyone. So I used to come here every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday night at nine at nine, right? Nine PM. At nine PM at night and we used to do our own things. So a lot of my technique that I that I learned in my fights, a lot of the fights that I won, people think that I learned the technique from where I was. The honest truth was I learned it here. But I but I kept it on a D low. I kept it I kept it kind of quiet. I didn't want to want to pull it on my Instagram too much because I didn't want the people I was under at the time to get offended. But listen, the truth was out now. Listen, this is where I learned all my stuff. Can I swear? Uh, ideally not. My okay. channel, I don't really This is where I learned all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this this is where I learned all my Keep stuff. It PG. Yeah. I'm trying to hit a wider audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is this is where I learned all my stuff. And actually, the only time that I didn't really do things here was on the Taylor fight. Remember on the Taylor fight, yeah, I was I still come here, yeah. but I used to sh I used to come here and then I used to stretch because my body was so aching from all the strength and conditioning work that they introduced to my training regime. They introduced so much new stuff. It wasn't only my strength and conditioning. There was so much new stuff that they introduced that my body was so it was still be so aching. I would come here and I would stretch, and I would do pads for five or ten minutes and and then I'll leave. There wasn't. I couldn't really do much because I was so tired, yeah. and so that's the only camp that I wasn't um, doing stuff here. And what happened? I find I got I, I lost. The f I think I started. So if we go back to the beginning, like basically, I used to come to the gym. Um, so me and O'Hara known each other from Peacock times, yes. blah blah years ago, and then I opened my gym, and then Davis put it on his Instagram. He was like, "Oh, my friend just opened a gym," so we just started training mm -hmm. like i think you hit me up and you're like oh you know what i'm training at this gym but mm -hmm. it's a bit too many people there i want to mm -hmm. do i want a quiet space i was like you know what take the key mm -hmm. train at my gym whenever you want but i was like really into the business back mm -hmm. then so i'll just come into the gym at like 9 p.m just mm -hmm. to get money do you remember mm -hmm. i used to come to the draw mm -hmm. get my money and i used to watch them train and just say how you doing guys blah mm -hmm. blah blah and i think it was miguel yeah. fish msv boxing, MSV boxing. And, and, my and your brother william uh boxhound and they would do the pads and stuff. And I would, sometimes I'll just come in and I'll just watch. And then I would be like, but then I think after a while, I started saying small things. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you know, that's sick. That's, those pads are sick. How come mm -hmm. try do a little this or a little bit of that? And then one time Davis was like, I came in, Davis was like, yo, Carlos, why don't you take me on the pads? Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, oh, no, I don't know. Cause I, at the time I wasn't really into the coaching like that. I was just trying to make money. In terms of like just coaching personal training davis was like oh the cars take me on the pads and i was like oh, okay fine and then i did a little something like mm. some basics and i was like because to be fair at the time because i was not even i didn't really know about the pre program mm. even though me and him were friends i was still like oh you know it's ohara davis he's doing his thing he's doing well i'm yeah. proud of my boy like so i didn't want to get involved i didn't want to i didn't feel like i had anything to offer um, that's how I saw it. Mm -hmm. um, so when we did pads, to me, like I don't know, I've never been to a Sims gym. Mm -hmm. I've never been to any other gym. So all I know is what I know and what got me through the amateur boxing system. And obviously, I love boxing, but I was kind of comparing myself at the time to some trainer in my head that I thought, oh yeah, the pros must know a lot of things that I don't know, and they they did. Um, but I didn't know that at the time what I knew was enough. Anyway, long story short, we were doing some pads and then the more I came to the gym, I, we used to spar, we used to do a lot of body sparring, I remember that. And then you just kept saying to me, oh, you should train pro fighters, you should train pro fighters. Um, and then I would always say, no, 
I don't want to do that. I just want to run my business. I don't want to do that. And was I tell you guys from now, yeah, I was never ever gonna train the profiles. I was not gonna do it. So many people have suggested mm -hmm. it. I was not gonna do it. And this guy used to watch, ask me once a week, and I was like, hell no, I'll never do that. So when I got that call, um, after working with him for a couple of years, I think three four years, mm -hmm. the first fight that I helped him was against that Hungarian guy, mm -hmm. where. I was like, mm. don't be on the ropes. And that whole fight, he didn't go on the ropes remember, at yeah. all. And I remember when you got near the ropes, you, you moved up and I was like, yes, it's mm. working. So I could see the footwork was getting there. Mm. And then he won the English title. Um, but I didn't really understand how much of an impact my training was mm. having. I didn't really get it at the time. I could see your footwork was better, mm -hmm. but I was kind of like, ah, you know, small. I think where mm. I really saw the difference in your boxing was when you fought that Scarpa mm. fight. Um, where again it was about staying off the ropes mm. and keeping it long and even though that was like I, I would say it was a good performance but I would, I would say it was not the best performance in mm. your whole career um, I still felt like I had a big impact on that fight mm. actually another place I saw the, the changes and adaptation was against the Ma uh, what's it? Derry Ma Matthews Derry Matthews fight where you were using your reach a lot and, and you caught him mm. and you stopped him. That, that was like, I was like, yeah, you mm. know what, my guy, he's mm. doing his thing. Yeah. Um, anyway, do you want to take over? Yeah. A, lot, a, lot, a lot of people thought that I, was, that I was learning what I was learning from the coach I was with, but it wasn't. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm paying these guys a lot of money because they're earning decent money for my fights and mm. everything I learned is not from there. Everything I learned, and to be honest, if what happened didn't happen, I would still be with them. I would still be there. But when what happened happened, that was the perfect opportunity to say, cool, I've been treated wrong. My contract with you guys is up in about a month's time anyway. So now I'm gonna be here full time. And I know that me being here full time, being with people that I actually learn from, that's where I'm gonna improve you even more. Instead of doing the three days a week, an hour or so, imagine me being here full time. I used to, and even back there sometimes, I used to, I used to, I used to like, listen man, I'm doing these plans, but imagine I was here act, actually learning the science of the game. Imagine how good, um, imagine how good I'd be, and that's what I wanted in my in the back of my mind. I really wanted to be here full time anyway. So with the situation happening, it was a perfect opportunity for me to now say, listen, our time's done. We had a good time, and be based here um, full time. And we can see, like we, I don't know, you guys have watched the last fight, mm -hmm. and I've read the mm -hmm. comments. It's mm -hmm. 100% positive mm. comments. Yeah. Everyone pressed the like button. But, I didn't mm. see anything mm -hmm. negative. A lot of people have issues though because Carlos doesn't really, um, he hasn't got experience in training a pro fighter. He hasn't got experience that Sims has got in the fact that Sims has been in the game for years and Sims understands more how the game works outside the boxing ring. But Carlos understands how the game works inside the boxing ring and that's more important than anything. That's more important than anything. He understands the science. And I feel like the knowledge that you have in boxing it's not like you're going to know everything just because you've been in this game for 10 to 15 years. But I'm telling you, most of these guys that have been in the game for 10 to 15, 20 years are doing the same thing now that they've done in the first year. I was just going to say that. There's been, no, there's been no change. So if you look at how these guys coach their first fighter, they're still coaching the same guys the same thing. They're still doing the same thing. They don't understand the technique of the fight game. Carlos understands the technique of the fight game, even though he hasn't got experience as in being in the industry and stuff. He understands how the game works. He understands what shots to throw, where to move about, how to, how to defend, how to move uh, certain drills that I should, that I need to do to help me. He more understands that, more than these guys that have been in the game for over 20 to 30 years. And um, you know, and that's what it's about. It's not about being with this coach because he's known, or with that coach because he's known. No, be with someone smart. I feel where I'm coming to the game young, um, and this is me just being honest, I see where the advantages lie is the mm. fact that, you know, because I'm young, I'm more susceptible to innovation, mm. yeah. creativity, mm. um, keeping up with latest sort mm. of scientific mm. ways of thinking. And um, I more sort of look up to the, mm. the, 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 not just the legendary old school fighters, mm. which I study as well, mm -hmm. but also where's boxing heading now? That's mm. what I'm focused on. Like, yeah, okay, cool. Those fighters in the 60s, 70s, 80s, I respect all of them mm. and they were all great and paved the way. But the sport of boxing is continually evolving mm. and it's constantly changing. So I'm always thinking, where is boxing heading? Mm. Where is it now as a sport? 
who is at the top of the food chain mm. right now? Why are they at the top of the food chain? What sort of things do they do? Mm -hmm. We've got guys like Mayweather, who's retired now. We've mm -hmm. got Lomachenko. Uh, uh, like, this guy is mm -hmm. doing very yeah. innovative, creative things. Um, and he doesn't just do boxing. He does mm -hmm. many different things. Um, so I feel like I'm humble enough to not rely on knowledge because knowledge is just of the past. And I'm humble enough to focus on imagination and creativity mm -hmm. and learning. Like, I come into this game... I feel like a child, like a baby that's mm. excited and wanting to learn. And that's where I feel that kind of desire to learn has rubbed off mm -hmm. on Davis as well. Because one of the biggest changes I've seen on uh, on Davis's boxing is he actually wants to learn now. He comes to me and he'll message and be like, oh, can, you, can we try this drill? Mm -hmm. Or he'll send me a clip. Or oh, have you seen that mm -hmm. move? And that's what, as a fighter, it's not just up to your coach to do research and to investigate and you have to have that appetite within yourself as well you can't be lazy and leave everything just to the coach you got to be wanting and willing to learn you got to be open to learning and you also got to be take some responsibility for what you want to learn as a fighter because mm -hmm. nobody's going to know and understand you better than yourself. you should understand yourself so you know like with me and davis the relationship we have he might have a day like the first time he said to me i'm tired i need a rest today i was like no we're going to train but then i thought about it i thought Wait a minute, this guy, he's very experienced. He has only lost one fight where I felt that, you know, he was just, the way he trained wasn't ideal. But it's worked for him so far. And he knows his body. He's, he's feeling it. He knows his body. So let me trust him. Like, it's not just the fighter needs to trust the coach, but the coach needs to train, trust the fighter as well. And when he had a rest and he came back fresh, sparred well, trained well, I was like, yeah, cool, it makes sense. And since then, he, Davis is a guy that works, he's consistent, that's the main thing, he maintains consistency, he trains hard, and he knows his body, understands that, that makes my job easier as a coach as well. So, yeah man, followed the journey. And that's how the partnership came about, and yeah. you know, having a pro license or not, and he still hasn't got... I still haven't got my pro license, so I'm license. gonna vlog about mm -hmm. that too, because that's what... The people only thing, all, people understand, all licenses is a badge. All licenses is a badge. A badge doesn't mean, um, the fact that he hasn't got a badge doesn't mean oh, he doesn't know anything about boxing. Someone that hasn't got a badge can know a lot more than someone that does have a badge. He does know a lot more than all these guys that have been in the game and experienced this and you've got a badge, you've got this badge, you've got that badge. Yeah. This guy's a cut man, he, he can do the corner, he can do this. Listen, it don't mean that you know how to train a fighter. It doesn't mean that you know how to train a fighter. So a lot of people's issue was, you know, he ain't even got a pro license yet. He's not experienced but in the pro game. But you know the shocking, the shocking thing I realised about mm -hmm. getting a pro license? If you guys know, whoever knows the process, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong here, yeah, but the process is like this. They give you a book and you fill application, you send it in, they send you a book. Mm -hmm. you're, you're supposed to read that book that's got some information on like, you know, bits and pieces. It's mm -hmm. not nothing technical. There is yeah. no boxing in there whatsoever. The mm -hmm. only thing that you need to know is the rules and regulations mm -hmm. of the boxing, British Boxing Board of Control, which is an establishment. Mm -hmm. You need to know their rules about making weight. You need to understand their rules about mm -hmm. how much purse, pay purses and how much mm -hmm. they, what percentage they get, what a manager's supposed to do, what a promoter's supposed to do, how you set up championship fights. There is no technical knowledge whatsoever in that book there is no how to there is not even a description on how to throw a jab mm -hmm. it doesn't exist the way they the way that as a coach you're already supposed to know that stuff mm -hmm. they expect you to already know boxing they mm -hmm. don't care how much technical knowledge you have what you know about fitness they just want to make sure that you understand the rules and regulations and that you understand how to make weight how to help the fighter make weight mm -hmm in a safe way mm -hmm. that you they just want to know basically that you're not going to get your fighter killed yeah. that's what they want to know basically so when people are coming saying has he got his badge they don't really know what they're, to they're saying because me getting a boxer's license is going to do zero percent for my technical and strategic knowledge of boxing it doesn't exist that's really smart thing it's so bad yeah that even like let's say in the course i asked him i said Oh, I thought you guys were going to put me in the course because you go for an interview and you talk to them and you think they're going to put you in the course. They don't put you in the course. You go to a meeting and it's informative. What does informative mean? They just show you, tell you, okay, this is how you do raps. This is the tape you're supposed to have. This is what you're meant to have in their bag. It's a one-day course and you're done. So where people think that me doing a one-day course in boxing, tell me who, if someone comes from the street, never boxed before, 
tell me if they go and do that course whether they're going to learn boxing or not. If a coach has been in the game five years and he's got his knowledge of boxing, tell me where a one day course on the rules and regulations of boxing in terms of how many rounds you should be fighting, mm -hmm. blah, 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 is going to help them be a better coach in terms of the technical and the strategic side of boxing. It's not going to do anything for their boxing. Sure. So I'm sorry, no disrespect for coaches who do have a badge, but I'm not going to rely. It's don't think yeah, that I'm going to get my boxing license and I'm going to be like, yeah, that's it. I'm a pro coach. I've, I made it. Listen, I'm going to work my ass off to increase my knowledge of boxing and get as much experience. Watch, And I'm only focused on one fighter, no one else. I don't care. You can come and tell me about this guy. That I don't care. Is Davis sparring him? No, I don't care. Mm. Is Davis going to fight him? I don't care. I don't, I'm watching other people in relation to how can I get the best out of my fighter? Who can I put him in to spar where I can analyse certain ways that he's moving, the way he responds to certain styles? How can we get him to adapt to that style or that style? How can he learn to beat that guy? I want him to see. That's why we spar everywhere. We do everything. We can talk about that stuff mm. in another that's video. Funny. But that's so you guys know how these things work. Mm. work. Me getting licensed, the only benefit is I can be in the ring in between rounds. And I think that is a, it's a massive thing because where I can see and analyze certain things mm -hmm. and I can have eye to eye contact with my fighter, mm -hmm. I can pass on my spirit mm -hmm. and my mental, my mentality, my spirit, my energy, my calmness mm -hmm. and my belief and confidence. I want my fighter to look at me and say mm -hmm. and see in my eyes that I believe that he can do it. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, he's going to win this fight and he can execute this technique and I give him the strategy and he goes away confident knowing that my coach has got my back. That's the biggest thing I think I've got to offer. 100%. All good? That's it. Yeah, we're done. Like, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Let us know whether you like videos of me and him together or whether you just want to see me or just want to see him. Let us know, ask us more questions if you want us to answer your questions together. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you guys think of this. Is it duality? Is that the word? Yeah. Dual, yeah. Dual, no, dual. it's more like collaboration. Yeah, collaboration. That's what yeah. I'm looking for. This, this collaboration. Alright, <laughs> uh, let us know what you think. Minor about this boxing, O D. You know what it is. A long time coming. It was only it was only right. It was gonna happen. <laughs> Alright guys. Peace. Bo, 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 bo. That's a sick video. That's a good one.